we are coming off of uh, a 36 hour bear market <laughs> where the price dropped about 10k plus and we are sitting at currently 67,785 at Bitcoin and 3500 at Ethereum and the total market cap of crypto is roughly according to coin market cap 2.55 trillion how are you feeling Troy I'm feeling ecstatic yeah that was uh that was a crazy bear market we just had yeah, yeah. you know uh, I'm it's most people still have and I could agree like a, little, a slight PTSD from the previous bear market because I'm so used to, you know, we went through Terra Luna, FTX, we went through so much that I'm so used to having this pullback and then it's continuing to pull back. Like we did have that slow, be that slow bleed for like a week, but then we had a lot of great price action today, which we had a nice bounce into today's Fed meeting uh, yeah. and um, stock market making all two new all time highs. So uh, all three indices, <clears throat> ended at an all-time high today all three the nasdaq mm -hmm. s p the dow all ended at all-time highs the uh remarks by jerome powell were uh favorable to markets uh right around the time that uh, powell was talking you could see uh uniformly all of the uh <laughs> my son baseball down but bitcoin up it's hey. an inside thing between me and my me and my son. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, everything started ripping uh, right around when Powell was talking. I was actually in a meeting at the time, so I didn't get to see it until about 15 minutes after. Uh, stocks started the day up, and then they were then they were actually, at one point, they were down. The NASDAQ was down like 100 points, and then everything started ripping once Powell started talking and uh, kind of laying out what he sees to be the, the, the future. The markets didn't expect that there would be a uh, rate raise today. I don't think anybody did, but it was the 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 speech that Powell gave and and the tone of it that really set the markets uh, on fire today. Probably June will be when they're going to actually start to, uh, you know, lower lower the rates at least twenty five fifty basis points. Um, but you know, originally we thought we were going to get six six. Uh, six rate decreases and it looks like we're probably going to get maybe three um but the market took it in stride and in bitcoin also uh earlier today was in i believe it was like 61 62 this morning yeah it, was, it got low it got yeah. really low and then uh that also started to move and i i think we touched for a minute 68 again but we're like we're right in that range uh we're not far off the all-time high which is around 73k we're only a couple thousand away um we've had multiple 10k days now both up and down so uh ten thousand in a day to, to surpass that all-time high is definitely not out of the realm of possibility or something that we couldn't see occur i think this was well needed uh, i think that pullback was a big test on our conviction i mean unless you're just holding bitcoin i know i'm in plenty of altcoins i don't know whoever's watching what altcoins you hold but this was a test of your conviction now this is the truth. Like now you can reevaluate your portfolio and see like, okay, is this something I actually want to hold? Cause if some of my alts actually had a 40% drawdown, like it was insane. It, it, it actually spooked me out for a little bit, but they're up, they bounce back strong. So use this as a test of conviction. That's why we don't shit coin. We don't shit coin. <laughs> like Geo Budin, I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I, on the Solana blockchain, the amount of transactions, like there's, they surpass Ethereum. Like, the activity on Solana is insane. So we do, this is something we do have to talk about because Solana network activity What's is going, going on with that? What, that, that? I saw that was at like, what did that top? 210? 210. Did it get to 210? Yeah. And then it, and then it got down to like 160 something? It, yep. And then it's back at 190 right now. So this is a high beta all coin, still below its all time high. A lot of volatility but if, in that coin. But if you look at the market cap, this already surpasses all time high. So, but I feel okay. like market cap, People okay. don't look at market cap no. and bull runs. No, they're, FTV, it's just price. They're, it, it's a meme. Like it's people a look at price because it's a psychological thing. Yeah. And technically, Solana, because it's there's there's I think it's like four, five or six percent inflation. No, it's like four or five percent inflation on Solana. So the, so the market cap already made an all time high, but the price is still below its all time high. It's like twenty percent. But I'm already starting to scale out on Solana, even if this goes to a thousand. Like, I don't want to round trip my bags. I like Solana long term. But I want to pay myself. Like Can you explain point. really quick to the yeah. audience what round trip your bags means? Because yeah. maybe not everybody I, knows I do. That. I have been saying that a lot. Yeah, so yeah. round, round explain. tripping your bags is the best way to explain it is if you buy a coin, you make money on it, and you don't sell. You you would basically hold it back down to your entry point. And what happens is when you start to make money in crypto, 
and it hits your pri your price target. For example, you want to get out at 100, and it hits 100. But then you move the goal post, and it's through greed. It's through you know because you're greedy and you're not thinking rationally. You're you're very euphoric, and you keep pushing that goal post. Now you have to sit, stick to a systematic plan and scale out of your position. I say this all the time: just dollar cost average out of your position. Because even if you miss out on some gains, that's okay. You no one went broke taking profits, and from my experience, especially in the 2021 bull run, I kept pushing back the goalpost. I kept coming up with things in my mind, okay, my life is gonna be so much better, I'm gonna make so much more money, and then what happens is I rode that coin right back down to basically zero. So at least make, the least you can do is just make a trade risk-free. The least you can do is lock in complete profits and it's risk-free. That That's the best approach I think you could take, but. That's if you're shitcoining. So. Let's let's dive into some news. Um, yeah, let's do it. As we like to do, we scour Twitter day of our podcast to see what uh, the movers and shakers in the space, or you know the haters in the space, are <laughs> are uh, saying. And I'm going to start with a hater first. But what what he tweeted was actually something I agree with. Uh, Peter Schiff, uh, everybody's favorite uh, hater of Bitcoin, he tweeted at 5:08 uh, p.m. today. If the Fed actually was serious about bringing inflation down to two percent. It would neither be cutting interest rates nor slowing the pace of QT. Interest rates are still too low, and the Fed's balance sheet is still too large. The Fed is acting to benefit Biden and financial markets. So I'm curious of what you think about that statement. Is this the one from the Wolf of Wall Street? Or no, Wall Street? This, is, this is Peter Schiff. Okay. Take your time. Yeah, Nobody's I'm reading watching. this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, we are coming up to elections, so I feel like the way like the Fed are gonna react to certain like metrics, I feel like they're gonna like definitely try to make it so it benefits Biden and his election and his and his team coming up. So like, I mean, I'm just, I'm different. Like, I'm unique. Like, I, I don't trade fundamentals. Like, I just trade, like, are you talking about as far as, like, trading and how I'm going to react to the news? No, I'm just talking about how you think the Fed, if you think the Fed is acting in the capacity that it's supposed to be acting, which is neutral. Yeah. Or do you think that they're being, in some sort of way, manipulated, influenced by the fact that we yes. are in an election year and the fact that, you know, they say this every election cycle, so I, I say it tongue in cheek that this is the most important election that we we, we, we ever will see. ever see. But I mean, if they history, say that every yeah. time. Yeah, but, we say that. Every but uh, like, do you think definitely. that there? Do you think that there's some pressure being put on behind the scenes? I definitely think to tell is. them that this is how you need to be react. I mean, because honestly, today, like, if you just look at today, the the fact that we moved in all markets is is up as we did. And basically, we started the day and we ended the day the same way that we thought it was going to be. Rates weren't going to be raised. Like people, like the the odds were like in the high nineties that it wasn't going to be raised. So it's not like it was a surprise. Yeah. So it's basically what he's the speech that he gave was yeah. really His what tonality. So that I think is where you see the influence. Yeah. Is is how he's speaking and what he's what he's saying, and I think it's hard to it's hard to argue against the fact that he's being influenced by outside forces either intentionally or unintentionally because he's human to not he may also just not be not want to like make things go in, in in either it may not necessarily be that he's that he's supporting you know the Biden administration's agenda he may just want to try to not do anything real crazy to make Influence it go in, either, it, yeah, any, in direction. any direction yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and in effect he's influencing things by doing that yeah. is, is the point that I'm trying to make. Do you think uh, he'll be an, like, I don't want to get like too crazy political, but like, let's say Trump gets elected. Do you think like he's going to make some, I, I don't think Gary Gensler, I think he'll be fired. I don't think he'll be around much longer. I think he's, he's I honestly don't think Gensler makes it regardless of who wins yeah i think they're gonna have to i think you don't do it because it's an election year yeah it just looks bad for the the incumbent administration but i think he's just been so beaten down in congress by both sides of the aisle that i think after the election season either he's just going to take a job at some cushy wall street firm or they're just going to say you know pack your bags and what about go. powell well, Powell's been in office for both of the, the Trump administration and for the Biden administration, and neither one made a move. So I, I don't, I don't, I, him is a little bit 
less certain. Yeah. I think it depends on uh, uh, how this ty- this uh, reduction in rates go and how the markets react. And if we get that recession that everybody keeps thinking was going to happen, if, 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 that, if that occurs or not. While, while we're sitting here, too, I, I'm seeing uh, – I, I didn't realize this because I'm not following it as closely, but gold hit an all, another all-time oh, high I today. Oh, I did see that today, yeah. Yeah, d- uh, Peter Schiff, because I'm on his thing now, it says, despite consistent outfalls all year, GLD – Finished today at a record high. Closed the evening spot. Gold is at a all, new all-time high, trading above 2200 for the first time ever. I'll be discussing this in Powell's Dovish press conference on tonight's live podcast. So, um, yeah, gold is 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 uh, the definitely the turtle in this race. Oh, um, terrible. Again, I I I've been having I've been having a lot of back and forth. Uh, and again, I'm I'm trying to to reduce some of this because it's just it's it's not it's, at the end of the day it's not very beneficial but i've been having back and forth with the with the anti-bitcoiners and for for whatever reason the ones that i've been having the back and forth with the most lately are gold and silver guys and for those that know my story that have followed our podcast at all my foray into bitcoin was through gold and silver i wasn't i was originally gold and silver and you'll never hear me in this podcast ever talk like you should never have gold and silver like i've even said that having some of that in your portfolio is not a bad idea um so i don't hate gold and silver i just don't think that I don't know how somebody that understands gold and silver to the capacity that these guys do. I, I had a conversation with them. I said, basically, they're like one layer above being Bitcoiners. Like, mm-hmm. they just need to go that extra layer down yeah. to really, like, get the meat and potatoes to, like, go down the rabbit hole. And they're just, for whatever reason, either it's because how tied they are mon- monetarily to gold. Like, Peter Schiff has Schiff Gold Investments. Right, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he's 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 basically incentivized to to have that view plus he's branded himself in such a way that he's anti-bitcoin i think it would almost be disappointing at this point if he became a bitcoin i know but some of these <laughs> other guys some of these other guys that are younger that are into like gold and silver and they speak like gold and silver is going to outperform bitcoin it's like where is your proof for that yeah. you can't say well gold's been around for five thousand years because even if you look at the beginning it's still taking gold at zero to five to twenty two hundred over 5,000 years still doesn't outpace zero to 73,000. Like, what are we talking yeah. about here? Like, at no point in time does the chart of gold or silver look remotely it, close to it, how the Bitcoin chart looks. What's Bitcoin up? Or, uh, sorry, gold up. Isn't it, like, up 100% in, like, 20 years? Like, isn't it, like, a crazy, like... No. Oh, even, in 20 years? Maybe in, tw- in 20 it might that's be. But insane. in the great financial crisis of 2008, I think it topped out at 1,900. Right around 18, 1,900. And that was in 2008, 2009. Oh, and then we had a bear market for gold yeah. where it went down to like 1100 So it went from 1900 to 1100 yeah. So from 1100 2200 would actually be a 100% double up from the bottom. But I mean, what are we talking about here? I think we're at a point where I don't even think having gold in your portfolio should even be a discussion. At the, you know what I mean? Like I, I disagree. I do like, disagree like, with do you, that. Are you talking about like physical gold bars or are you talking about an ETF? Are you talking, I'm ta- about, physical are you talking gold. about No, like no, chain, I'm, I'm like advocating for physical gold. Physical gold? ETFs and, and paper contracts on gold, I feel the same way about I paper gold contracts. I would love to hear your thought process on that. Uh, w- w- like in, in like your, your thoughts on like why why hold physical gold when you can just buy more crypto or w- more Bitcoin? I'm not so, – see, I'm not saying that I'm going to have an overwhelming majority of anything in gold or silver. Mm-hmm. I still have – I still have silver. I don't have – I don't – think i have gold anymore i can't remember silver you i still have silver yeah. for sure uh i don't think i have any gold anymore yeah i stopped you buying it and what'd you buy i did bought bitcoin but i but <laughs> but but i kept some silver only because it's like the the amount of silver to liquidate is just like it's what 25 26 dollars an ounce i mean i gotta go liquidate 10 20 30 40 50 ounces to even yeah. get anything of of, of, <laughs> of value but like that doesn't mean that i don't think if you're gonna invest in gold and silver don't buy the etf like the guys that are like gld like the, 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 mm-hmm. No, if you're going to own, if I'm going to own Bitcoin, I'm owning Bitcoin the self custody. Yeah. I want the piece of the block. I want the ownership. Yeah. We're going to talk about something in regards to ownership in a little while too, which will drive it home. But like, if I'm going to go, own gold or if I'm going to own silver, I'm going to own gold and silver. Yeah. I'm going to put it in my safe physically. But again, here's the problem. Even with that ownership of that physical property, like, the, the the fungibility, the portability, like the, the it's ability, terrible, it's man. it's still not ideal, but I'd rather have that than the paper contract. Because I was just thinking, like, let's say, like, I wanted to, like, because I don't think I'm going to live in my apartment. And let's say I want to go backpacking, right? I was just thinking how terrible and how uncomfortable that would make me feel. Not just the portability factor, just the fact that it's heavy. Like, I, I wouldn't want to carry around silver coins 
in today 2024 you know what i mean and let, like especially if i didn't have a place a safe have a safe house you know not everyone's going to have a place where they can feel safe putting that you know i'm sure you can say the same about a seed phrase but i'm sure you can find a small piece of paper and you can find there are still there's still people advocating on twitter finance people on twitter advocating for holding cash right now i i, I that is just like if if it's between cash or gold, physical gold and silver, like physical gold and silver, and it's not even a question. What's crazy is I actually am bullish cash. Oh, you gotta explain that one. No, to me. like I, I really genuinely you think that to I me. really genuinely think we're gonna have a huge recession and I wanna have a bunch of cash to buy like these assets. Like have you looked at like a lot of these AI coins? Like see you this is a good conversation yeah. that we can have right now. Let's this is it. good for the viewers. I, I I see why you say that, and I see what your but ideology is for that. No, no, no. Cash. I I understand why you think that. And again, I'm 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 gonna say this when I don't think you should ever not have cash. Like I still have some cash on mm. the side. Like I don't think having no cash on the side is the answer either. But to think that you need like large sums of cash cash if a recession were to hit, although I believe that one won't, and I'm gonna tell you why in okay. a second as well. If you have good assets that you can liquidate that that hold their value why hold the cash because yeah. the cash is devaluing because of money printing right at a rapid pace but if i can hold an asset that's outpacing cash mm -hmm. i can always liquidate that asset and beat whatever i would have held in cash yeah. if let's say i hold twenty thousand dollars in cash and i hold it for the next two years waiting for that recession yeah but i buy an asset for 20 grand now if the recession hits certain assets are still going to perform and maybe i have forty thousand instead of the twenty thousand i have sitting in cash getting five percent and now i have twenty two thousand or twenty three thousand to deploy when i could have had forty right and so i see what you're saying yeah. but the the flip side of that is and, and you're in the group chat with me and all the other defines if any of them are watching you hear me you hear me use this term all the time like the perpetual money printing is just stopping a recession from ever occurring and if you don't believe me we should have we should have had one 2022 was all the ingredients for a recession. Yeah. And if it didn't happen in 2022, that was a lagging effect. We should be in one now, right? It, we should be, we should have been in one in 2022 or we should be in one now. And the only reason we're not is because the money printers cannot be turned off for a, a whole plethora of reasons. So I don't think we ever get a recession. I think we just get a, a system deep reset or the actual just like systematic collapse. That's, so you're saying you don't think we're going to ever get a recession. That's, that's top signals. That's top signals. You think that we're like, cause like historically we, we do have like stock market, bear markets, you know, you think they're just going to keep printing and printing and printing. And when, either when, when was our last bear market since 2000, since the great financial crisis, we had like small, we had tw coronavirus. We had a technical. Yeah. Less than two months. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. And, they and then we had one money. in 2019. Yeah, yeah. We had one in 2019 and that lasted. They, they, they literally were turning the printers off. They were trying for the first time to turn the printers off and that caused a recession in 2019. And they said, oh, shit, and turned it back on. <laughs> yeah. So you think the boomers just kicked the can down for so long? Just... I think Satoshi Nakamoto realized before anybody else that the great financial crisis in 2008 was eliciting, at the time, the greatest influx of cash that we had ever seen to the system and that he saw that as a catalyst for a time period that we could never go back to, mm -hmm. no, go, no, go back from. I think he saw perpetual money printing, and he was looking to create something that could combat the perpetual money printing. Because, yes, we haven't had real, like, real live bear markets that have lasted like a couple of years. Like even 2022, really wasn't that big of a no. bad of a bear market. And we bounced right back way over all that. Like we're, we've, we've gained every single thing back plus some after that 12 month, whatever you want to call that cool off period. Right. Bear markets should last a couple of years. Yeah. You get, you get seven years of a bull then you should get some years of, of, of bear or at least like flat static activity. We haven't had that since 2008, 2008, 16 years ago. We're double. We have had two. Bear, bull markets like back to back. So my question is like, what constitutes a recession? And a recession is like two whatever they'll two say negative two, quarters. two negative quarters. Yeah. We've had we've had some of that, but they're fudging those numbers. Yeah, yeah. So we don't even know if that's true or right, not. Right. 
in 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 having a period of actual like depression of assets for an extended period of time we haven't seen that yeah really seen that right so like 2008 to 2024 that's never happened in the history of our of our of our so economics. This is like uncharted territory. Unprecedented. Yeah. Unprecedented territory. Yeah. So you say that you're waiting for a recession. I really thought if we were going to have one, it was going to be this sort of intense rate hike like we've never seen. And we were going to get like 2022 was going to be a catalyst for like a little bit of time, at least in equities. I still believe that crypto was going to do what crypto was going to do because that's on a whole different level but i really believe equities were going to be down for a minute yeah it's crazy and it and, it and it just it just didn't it just didn't and that's because they're printing so much money there's so much money printed that equities literally cannot lose their values because if the money goes to all the money goes into the into the things that rich people believe have values real estate equities like fine art like all these things are getting are sucking great at, in bitcoin yeah. All the great assets identified by smart people is sucking all of this cash, inflating the values. So your equity prices go up, your real estate prices go up, your Bitcoin prices go up. Gold is even finally getting some some love as well. So all your sound assets or your or, or what is identified by people as sound assets are in are going up in value while the dollar is continuing to lose the value, right? You go to the store and things keep going up higher and higher. So your dollar is losing money, which goes back to me disagreeing with you at the beginning by saying I believe that you should be holding cash. Because even if, which I don't think will happen, but it but I could be wrong because I'm not perfect. Even if we get that recession, you don't want to hold the cash because the assets are sucking all that cash liquidity and you could just liquidate that and have more than what you'd have if you just kept that cash in the bank. No, that was a really great point. And also we have like, and I do want to talk into like the, the products we have now for Bitcoin to actually take out leverage, like loans against it and cash loans against it. I think that's huge because I want a game plan and, and my game plan for this crypto, this is a crypto podcast. You know, we have to have a plan and my plan is I want to cash into Bitcoin and I want to have these products. Do you have that article or what, what kind of that product that, cause the products are getting way better for Bitcoin. Uh, I, I do not because I still, I still do not possess confidence that they're yeah. going to uh, do the job. The article that I sent you was ETF based. Yeah. BlackRock. Okay. So, and I believe that's where it'll start, Yeah. but I'm never going to own the ETFs never. directly. Never. Why? I'll di I'll probably never directly own them. I'll, pro I'm, I'll probably indirectly own yeah, them if I continue yeah. to put Not money like, in a 401k yeah. through a job. Oh. I'll indirectly own them at some point, but to, to to directly own them, I don't think I ever will. So I'm waiting for the products to mature to a place where the More actual safe. physical Bitcoin can be can be used to 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 get. But but again, like you'll see it you'll see it happen with the ETFs where BlackRock, Fidelity, these large you know broker houses will. Uh, will create these products where you can use your asset, which would be what you think is Bitcoin, but is the just paper paper contract of Bitcoin and use that to borrow against, to get cash, to save on taxes by still owning the underlying asset, which you believe to be the Bitcoin, which is the ETF. So you're saying like a world where we have like a DAP where we can connect our cold or hot wallet and where you feel comfortable to actually connect your, your cold, your hot wallet to like uh a DAP or a, a website where you can take a loan out against your Bitcoin. Is, there's, is that there's probably, I, I don't see a world initially where you're not going to have to take your Bitcoin out of cold, cold self, you know, cold storage, self custody and put it on some sort of platform yeah. to get Collateral. Uh, leverage or to get access to uh, some kind of fiat loan or some yeah. kind of loan that will bring value from that coin. I, I, I initially I don't see any any world like staying especially on, the fact a ledger or something especially the, the fact that so many people don't self custody anyways so why would you why would you start with the small demographic of Bitcoiners mm. and try to although the small demographic of Bitcoiners probably have the most yeah. value of it but I think if you're trying to mess if you're trying to do and you're worried about fees because it doesn't necessarily matter how much you're you're making your money on the fees per yeah. se. So if I can hit a lot of the, the, the guys that have less Bitcoin and hit them with the same percent fees, the volume will make up for the people that are like, I'm not giving up my self-custody Bitcoin. But I think at some point it will mature to a place where they'll figure out a way, I think, that you can use your your keep keep your keys where you maybe you share the keys multi -state. I'm not really sure. That's way yeah. beyond my my scope of, of, of complete understanding to try to explain that. But I but 
as of today right now, the products that do exist, I am not confident and I would not uh, borrow whatever you want to call there's it. A, there's, a there's too risk. much risk. Yeah, yeah. There's way too much risk. Yeah. And I believe that there will be a day where where the same way that you take your property, borrow against, and get a loan, and you have little to no worry about you losing your, your real estate unless you do something really stupid, that there'll be a day where that, that'll be the same sort of par with your Bitcoin. And we're not there yet, yeah. uh, but the, the ETF uh, uh, borrowing that's gonna be starting with BlackRock and Fidelity is the starting building blocks of that. I do wanna pivot towards, because we just got some news today about Ethereum being a, a security. You yeah, know, the SEC you. is coming, you know, coming full force at Ethereum. And we we've, we've seen what they what happened to Solana when they came at Solana for being a security and that was when Solana was at twelve dollars. Ethereum's at what? Thirty it was at thirty one hundred it dipped down to thirty one hundred dollars when that breaking news came out. Went right up to thirty five hundred. So like I'm interested to see like how this plays out. I think this is their way. I know BlackRock just deposited a hundred million dollars into an Ethereum address. Maybe this is more manipulation. Maybe this we're seeing it in full blast. Everything's transparent, recorded on the blockchain and the ledger. BlackRock owns the SEC. They 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 don't own them in the fact that they run the SEC. Yeah, yeah. They're just they're they're Gary's his bitch, basically yeah. is what we're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> Gary's is what? His bitch. <laughs> no, we we can we can uh, curse a little bit, but when are they gonna end? Like we I, we already know it's not a security. They had an initial coin offering. Yes. So you, so you're on the side the, of it the, being a security. The original, the original release of the coin was for profit. Right. The, was the the thought of getting that coin? You was are not a security guy. The, the, <laughs> I'm I'm listen. I'm studying for this the, this testing stuff right now. So like I'm I'm reading about these definitions. Like yeah. When you are releasing when you're releasing something, and the intent of the release into the eyes of the individuals getting that product believe that they're taking it for profit. Makes it a security. Couldn't that to say the same thing with Bitcoin? No, because Bitcoin was released with no value. There was no the value transfer was just was Satoshi to hell, Satoshi to, to and it had little to no value, and people were mining it and throwing it away. And Satoshi, in all intents and purposes, doesn't exist because nobody knows who he is, and there's no central yeah. player that's controlling things. With Ethereum and every other shitcoin, and XRP, with every other shitcoin, you have a centralized system of people that hold either a majority of the coins, which is just about all of them, or people that can change the protocols right from under you. Like if you look at like a company like Apple or you look at any of these other like publicly traded companies, like they have boards of directors and stuff like that, but they can't just make major like changes without certain like protocols in place mm -hmm. vitalik can wake up tomorrow and say i'm forking this thing 17 different ways since sunday and this is everybody's got extra and like and just create mass chaos yeah and you're gonna have an etf that's gonna be following this price and you have this absolute chaotic event occur because some asshole just decided he was gonna do it right and again i've said this before i don't necessarily think vitalik's a a a, a bad actor and I, and I think he's got the right intentions but it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because there's a there's if you if you start Here's the problem. If you start with Ethereum and you make that a commodity, like you said, then how do you not say Solana's not one? How do you not say XRP's not one? How do you not say Dog with Hat isn't one? Like everybody has an argument because you let that one who distinctly started a certain way and had and had things occur, like the Dow hack, like big things happen in its history that you can be like, wait a minute, it doesn't seem right. And some of these other coins that are way more centralized than Ethereum and have way more problems than Ethereum don't have the history that Ethereum has. And they're going to say, hold on a second. Now we're playing favorites? You're letting Ethereum go? Why can't I go? Now you have an influx of all these shit coins that have no business having an ETF. And it's a, it's a, I don't agree with Gary on just about anything except for how we've used Ethereum. And I don't like so that if you, I don't like that he's been vague. That's the problem that I have. He's like wishy washy on just answering the question. Just come out but, and say because you're a finance guy, Ethereum is a security. But if you're talking about security being a security, you're talking about everything and everything in ethos being security. Except for Bitcoin. Except for so you think Bitcoin's the only commodity, everything's a security. Yes. And you think what are the chances of us getting an ETF in May? For Ethereum? Yeah. Close to zero. Close to zero? If not I and I I just don't say zero because nothing's hundred percent. Yeah. But how damn sure. So you're close. confident it's in May? I, I'm confident by May. I'm very confident. Should we make a May. live bet? 
Oh, how many? How many? How many satoshis? I don't know. We can do. <laughs> let's do. Let's do a live bot. I I'm confident we're gonna get an Ethereum ETF. Okay, May what? May first? May thirty no, first? By the end of May. May th- is there thirty one days in May? Yeah, by the 30? end of May. So by May thirty first. By June first. So we'll, we'll have any. You have June. You have May first at twelve fifty nine p.m. Eleven fifty nine. Twelve fifty nine. Just any time by June first. Anytime by June 2025. That there will be an ETF trading? There will be, it, it'll be approved, yeah. ARC, BlackRock. So there's a have. difference because Bitcoin was approved and it didn't trade for like a couple no, of days. It, no, so not, it will be approved. It doesn't have to trade. It'll Because I know it takes a few days. It doesn't have to be a crazy bet. Just like something. Just so no, I, I want the bet. I'm just trying. I'm okay. just trying to lock this down. Because you got. So, you're saying you're zero percent. I'm, you have to I'm be not very, saying zero. I'm saying close. Close to, to zero. Close so let's say five percent. I will give you ninety five percent. It doesn't give you five. I'll give you five percent. That's crazy. I'll give, why? Because people. Can you explain to me why that's crazy? I just think it's crazy. What? It, what? What gives you the confidence? What gives you the confidence with Gary Gensler, who who hates Ethereum? It's all fud, dude. Who hates Ethereum? I really think it's all fud. I think it's all market so manipulation. So who, who who benefits? Who benefits the, within the Ethereum institutions? ETF? How? Because they're gonna they're gonna. You don't think Larry Fink got to I be Larry Fink? I don't think they'll be staking. I think they'll. Just you don't be think spot. Larry Fink got to be Larry Fink and got to be the head of BlackRock, mm-hmm. ten trillion under management by not meticulously hundred dollars understanding yeah. what things are in the the natural risks that people don't see by by putting your stamp. Onto something, yeah. Is there money to be made in an ETF for ETH? Of course. Do you think it's not going to happen this cycle? Do you think it's events are going to happen later down the road? Because I'm still making I, the best. I will not them. say. I will not say never, because I think get Gensler out, get somebody more crypto friendly in, and when I say crypto friendly, shitcoiner, right? Not Bitcoiner, shitcoiner. So I think, I think somebody else coming in. We're 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 gravitating because even the guys. In Congress, who who we think are Bitcoiners are still shitcoiners. They yeah. still like all these other coins on top of that. They are advocates for Bitcoin. They are advocates for the for the ecosystem, but they still don't fundamentally understand Bitcoin because they like these other shitcoins or they believe these shitcoins have value. Um, and and I think, I think that eventually we probably will get. And I think and and if I'm being totally honest, I think it'll be chaos if we get if we get a if Ethereum gets. Approved and we get one. I just think it causes chaos. I don't think it. I think they're fine the way they are. The ETF for Bitcoin <coughs> was enough for the entire ecosystem yeah. because Bitcoin is the granddaddy. Bitcoin got through the door. Now Bitcoin is free to do what it didn't do last cycle. It'll do that and more this cycle, and everybody can jump on for the ride, and everybody can be everybody can be fine. Why do we want to f this up by inviting all these other ones into the door who have bad actors? Again, I'm not necessarily saying ETH, yeah. but everybody behind yeah, yeah. that, do you trust Richard Hart? Do you nah. trust Brad Garlinghouse? They're not going to Do you trust uh, all Justin Sun? Do you trust no, uh, I like don't. like? But the point is, like, they have legitimate arguments by saying, "What about us? Yeah. If you're allowing Ethereum, what about us? What makes them so much better? Their price, their market cap, like." Mm-hmm. Then you got yeah, Solana coming here, yo. Strong then Solana's yeah. like, yo, like Holy. we're uh, Solana can be like, hey, we're the fifth biggest one in this race. Like, where where are we at? So I was trying to read when I saw that. I was trying to read about the security stuff, and I know a little bit about what securities are, but I was confused because to me, when I was looking into this, it seemed like a a make it a security so the government could regulate it. I feel like it's a backdoor way of getting around the fact that they don't like these coins. They don't like crypto at all because they feel like it's a threat. If I'm a political guy, if I'm a politician and I'm in the government and I'm, or I'm an elected official, they are, is, is this their weird way of trying to get control of something that they can't control? Making it an ETF? By making it a security. No, making it into security is basically just identifying what the asset is. It makes it easy for the market to recognize, feel a certain way about investing in it. It give it's supposed to in in the in the book definition, it's really supposed to give investors security, basically, in the fact of them investing in this asset and their and understanding there's certain risks 
and the risks being if it performs, but not risks like you're going to be rug pulled because they're going right. to take every dollar out of this and you're going to be sitting there like, what the hell just happened, right? So it's for investor protection at the end of the day. So if it got an ETF, you're, sub you're, you're basically saying stamp of approval investor protection, right? Why Bitcoin is, is safe, right? And again, if tomorrow Satoshi came out of the woodwork and was like, hey guys, <laughs> what's up? My whole view on everything, my whole world changes. The whole world changes, whole right? World changes. The whole world. Now I'm just like, oh my God. I don't now know. what, right? Speechless. So, so <laughs> the chance of that happening again is like less than 1%. It would have had, there's so many opportunities. And it's, so, so we're not even talking about that. But what I'm saying is you have that with every other coin, right? Like founders and stuff. You have people that have majority stake and have control over protocol that can make all these changes that BlackRock's going to stake a reputation for, or not even BlackRock, because BlackRock gets like a pass to make certain mistakes. But like some of these other players, like below Fidelity and BlackRock, like these other like broker houses, like that don't have the same sort of, like, are they going to want to like stake reputation with the people that they have in their house? Because like you mess up, they get an ETF with you and you're like the fifth, sixth guy in the totem pole. And then some, some random thing happens and ET, uh, ETH blows up and these dudes got like, seven eight figures in these etfs and they're just like what the hell like i'm leaving i'm go going somewhere else you screwed yeah. up you're no yeah. good right are they going to want to stake their reputation on that like yeah. they they will like i said they will make money these etfs will make money but do you want to risk your reputation on a product that is out of like larry fink can't control it yeah he has no control vitalik has the control of that etf yeah do you think Larry Fink, I mean, I know he says that they're filing and all this stuff, but I think if he really gets a fundamental understanding, do you really want this other guy to have control? Unless something behind the scenes where Larry, where, where Larry uh, Fink is going to make a deal with Vitalik and he's like, yo, guess who's on the ETH Foundation now? Larry Fink. That's Just joined the ETH Foundation, crazy. brother. And any move you make has got to go through Uncle Larry. Now, if that happens, my whole thought process on crypto is my whole viewpoint has changed because, like, that's mine I don't would think, stay the same. Yeah, I would have no I, because that, it's you're not you're you're expecting that because it's a foundation. Not necessarily expecting that, but like having founders and yeah, having yeah. like people, you can be taken over. Yeah. Who you can't again with Bitcoin? You who you can't no take it over. It, yeah. Michael Saylor, I don't care what he says. Would love to take over Bitcoin. <laughs> if you don't know that by now, with all the this dude is a madman. Yeah. This price drops 10k and he's buying 5,000 more a, coins. We should real quickly, and we'll stay on, on on subject. He just bought additional. How much bitcoins did he? Uh, he just made. A, he, dude, he he has officially reached the one percent of the. He's the king of. He has 210. MicroStrategy has. Micro strategy has uh, over 10,000 coins now. So he's at least 1% holder. He has at least 1%. And he has more than that because of all the lost coins and stuff like that. But like... That's crazy. No, I completely understand your viewpoint. Because it's like a decentralized protocol. Like no one owns it. No one has control over it. I, so would, I would love... They I, trust that. I would love than, people either... If, if you're watching live or if you're going to watch this on our playback when we edit this... I would love if people would would give like feedback on how they feel about yeah. this conversation, and yeah. um, because I know that people get excited about the ETF, and and people got excited well, about the Bitcoin. Good, that could be a good title too. Pe people got excited about the Bitcoin ETF, and you're you're super like bullish and excited, and seem well, to want to making a bet. We seem to want to throw your hands. seem to want to throw your satoshis away to. I will. That would be interesting. Let's see. How many Satoshis? Because I guarantee Satoshis will be a lot more expensive. Let's just do 100,000 Satoshis just to make it make it easy. 100, 100K sats. And right now, that's almost $70. By the time June comes along, that might be $110. 100K sats. 100K? 100K sats. 100K sats that there will not be. I say that there will not be. There will, there will not be. A that's all you got? There will not be a Bitcoin. I'm sorry. There will not be an Ethereum ETF. By June first, and you say that there will be, and the loser pays the winner. All right, 100, if Ethereum satoshis. is approved, your son gets to go into late to school, and <laughs> yeah. I get a hundred thousand. Can I sats. go late late to school <laughs> tomorrow? That's you're so again. It doesn't me. have to be operation. It just has to be approved. It just has, just to, has be to be approved. Not just has to be approved. Just it doesn't to approved. have to be available. It just deadline. has to be so approved. Like they, they have to make a choice. Like. Cash, we'll talk about it when I get home. He's he's too busy getting educated watching the podcast that he's gonna be tired for school. He he is my son is a uh, 
My Bitcoiner. son is a Bitcoiner. He is a uh, member of owner of a piece of the blockchain in self custody. So he gets he gets some respect in that. Yes, I want to talk about that next. Thank you for bringing that up. I actually have that here. So we're talking about ownership. OK, I'm going to read this article to you. I can't even believe I had to fact check this because in this day and age, you just have to do these types mm -hmm. of things because you don't know if these are real or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 100 percent real. And, and it's oh, it's disgusting. I. I, I'm on record saying this, I'm sure, but I'll reiterate it. I absolutely despise the state that I reside in, which is New York State. And the first chance that I get once I'm retired, I will get the heck out of this state, even if it's for six months, to, to have residency in some other state that's not NYS. But this happened in this state, and it is on the books as a law, which I can't even believe. I can't believe. I'm reading this too, yeah. A woman gets arrested for removing squatters out of her million dollar home in Queens, New York. Adele and Delaro inherited her family's home in Flushing, Queens after her parents passed away and was in the process of selling it when she noticed that someone illegally moved in. After she changed the lock, the squatters came back and the police arrested her, the owner, according to the New York landlord tenant law in New York, the shittiest state in the whole United States. It's against the law to turn off the utilities, change the locks and remove the belongings of someone who claims to be a tenant, not a, a, a monthly paying tenant, just some shit bag that comes into your house and squats there in your million dollar house that you own, not them that you got to pay all these bullshit taxes to, to this bullshit government and state, they can come in and arrest you, the owner, for trying to kick the dirt bag out that came into your spot. That is a real thing in this state of New York. And you wonder why we Bitcoin. And I wonder why you don't. Wait, so what do you mean a squatter? What does that, what does that mean? A squatter is an individual that is basically a homeless person that would like if they went into an abandoned house yeah. and were living in an abandoned house. They're doing that in a house that's that's not abandoned. It's being renovated to be sold or whatever. Or even somebody you could go on vacation. Let's say you go to vacation to, to Florida for six months. Yeah. Somebody comes in your house and you come back and say, hey, like you're in my house in New York State. They can say my house now and call the cops on you. That's what that makes no sense. That's the point. That is the point, there's, sir. There's something missing. This that story, is, that is not missing. That's the law. It is that's the, a law. It's the law in New York State. She yeah. was arrested. That's that's a law. She was arrested. If someone breaks in your house and sleeps in it and says it's my house now. And and inside in this article on Twitter, there's another one where in Seattle a similar thing occurred. Squatter granted restraining order against landlord by Washington State judge. And there's a plethora of people if you look here, that are outside. Yes. protesting protesting washington neighbors demand squatter to be removed they're just going in, in these liberal states new york being a liberal state these blue states have these ridiculous laws on the books that allow people that are homeless to just pick a house you know i gotta pay my large amount of taxes every year i would love to can i just go like when somebody moves out can i just go squat in that house and just not pay like they're paying no, you pay nothing like why would you want to buy a house why would you want to pay tax? Why would you feel? Why would you feel good about like? And we said I said this in the group chat, and I said it tongue in cheek. Like people are like, "Oh, I'm excited to pay my taxes because it means I made more money." It's like, yeah, miss me with that nonsense. You'll never see me excited yeah. or looking forward to paying taxes to these asshats that create these ridiculous laws to to dry, to do their best to keep me in my place. Yeah, no, that's absurd, insanity. And it's only in the blue states, you're, you're saying? Like California. You see this in demo Democratic-run states. Yeah. California, yep, that's another one that it happens in. Yeah, I've seen some crazy stuff. I don't even want to get into it. But yeah, on the bright note, I mean, this is our first live. I, th I think uh, I would love to like go back and see like how this went. For you guys that are tuning in, give us a like, subscribe.
you know, see see what you guys think. Because normally we do Facebook, but it's different tone on YouTube. I, I kind of like the kind of like it. Same. Any uh, so we have a little bit more time here. Do you have any more thoughts about the financial? Yeah, real quick, let's talk about Coinbase. Coin your, oh, your favorite, uh, my favorite exchange. Your favorite exchange <laughs> where you said, "Oh, I think they're really going to get their their stuff together." You know, they the, custody the for for all the institutions. Coinbase had a uh, status up on their page earlier. May experience intermittent failures. Because the price was moving. This was at 1 o'clock p.m. So it, it seems like when there's high volatility, when the market's congested, Coinbase, is, is they went down? Because I, I don't use Coinbase. Did they go down? Is that what Yeah, they saw? were down. Yep. Again? Yep. That's This is not going to be sustainable in the bull run. This is why you got to get off an exchange and get in cold storage self-custody. Because when when things move fast, you want to be able to like either enter – Buy the dip. If you want to buy the dip, you're not going to be able to buy the dip on a Coinbase. That's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So I, have you, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the, what the answer is because that's just not good. It's not good for, uh, not good for the ecosystem. It's not good for the for the users. It's not good for anyone. Well, uh, I can I can update uh, Gemini. Yeah, I can give you an update on that. Yeah, let I would me, love to hear that. Let me let me read that because I have an that's email. That's actually really cool, dude. That one, what's funny is because like Gemini, you were forced to huddle. Like, imagine someone that lost, you know, some crypto from the Gemini urn, and they were forced to huddle through the bear market because a lot of people probably would have sold. You would think, right? Like they would have panic sold early in the bear or later in the bear so yeah i mean there's there's they people forced to huddle, there's people you know? with significant uh bags on there of bitcoin of of ethereum and, and and you know alternative coins as well i'm sure that they had what they thought they were getting interest on that ended up at first we thought we lost them so i'm going to read i'm going to read this real quick it's it's a little long but i'll read rather quickly Real synops real quick synopsis, Gemini Earn was the platform that you could uh, take your assets from the Gemini exchange side and you could put them on the earn side and earn a yield depending on the coin. You got a certain interest in, you know, my my dumbass had two point three eight ETH on there and I was earning like I think I was earning four, I just, so 4%. every time I talk about it it's embarrassing. And I got caught up in that because I waited too late after FTX collapsed to to make a move so i thought they were gone i was like that ETH is yeah gone. you already wrote that off been ruined i don't even count it in my portfolio anymore <laughs> but pretty soon i will be <laughs> and you'll uh, be an eth maxi we are writing to provide you an update on the required notice today genesis and this was yesterday the 19th they had a court date <laughs> genesis asked the bankruptcy court to approve the settlement in principle announced on february 28 2024 which provides a, for a global settlement with genesis and other creditors in the genesis bankruptcy that will if approved by the bankruptcy court Result in all earned users receiving 100% of their digital assets back in kind, approximately 97% in the near term, and then the remainder as recoveries are received from DCG. This notice marks the start of the ba required bankruptcy court approval settlement process. No action is required on your behalf. As a reminder, this settlement, for example, if you had one Bitcoin lent in the earned program as of November 16th, 2022, the date of Gen Genesis suspended redemption, you will receive one Bitcoin back. And it means that you will receive any and all appreciation of your assets since you let them in the, the earn program. I looked the day that, that November 16th, ETH was at like $1,400 a coin. Yeah. So you're basically getting... As of right now, like twenty one hundred on yeah. on each coin, on top. Oh, only twenty one. Well, plus the fourteen. Fourteen hundred yeah, plus yeah. yeah, plus the twenty one. Uh, yeah, that's And awesome. then basically it says to go down a little bit further. Um, How do you collect that? How again, no, show up in your no, uh, no action is required on your part unless you object. Who the hell's going to object? In that case, objections are due by April 9th, and they'll tell you that you're an idiot. Uh, creditors who send the bankruptcy court an objection and that is not signed by an attorney. Yada yada yada. Yeah, uh, the bankruptcy court will consider approval of the settlement at a hearing scheduled for April 16th, 2024 at 11 a.m. So on April 16th will be that where the bankruptcy court will decide. I can't imagine. I mean, people are getting 100% back. What court's going to say, no, you can't do that? So it's just a uh, formality at this point. The settlement will not become effective until it has been approved by the bankruptcy court. So that would be April 16th. As a reminder, you can view the assets that will be returned to you if the settlement is approved by logging your Gemini coin through the Gemini website. Uh, and as a reminder, uh, 
Pending balances will be restored in kind with approximately 97% being distributed initially and the remainder in full. So for me, I, I looked, it would be like, I should get back 2.26, uh, roughly 2.27 yeah. of the 2.38. It was just ETH, right? That's all? Just ETH. That's all yeah. I had in there. Yeah, that's all I was that's done for. Sweet. Further updates regarding timelines will continue to be posted to the earn update page. Yeah, so I mean... That's yeah, awesome. I mean, congratulations! You're you're welcome well, to the, well, well, the well, I mean, side. I I I am I am because that's uh, what three six. It's almost like seven seven seventy five hundred. Like that's that's good. But then roll. Are you gonna roll it in a Bitcoin? Are you gonna hold it in an ETH? I will hold the ETH <sighs> through. Well, I will hold, hold the it, ETH. Hold it, hold it. I will hold the ETH through the what I, what we perceive to be the top. I, I've said this, even though I'm in the Bitcoin maxi, I do have a couple shit coins. Um. <laughs> And the the plan will be to 100% be out of all coins not named a Bitcoin. Um, yeah, me by, too. Me too. By I can't wait. Probably by summer, early fall of next year. I will start to DCA out. This, um, by the end of this year. Once, once the coins that I hold start to approach their previous all-time, all-time highs. Yeah. I will start to make scale 20, out. 25% yeah, yeah. scale outs. Well, I'm excited. And then I will hold until the top. And again, what I will do is a majority, probably half and half. I will probably li- liquidate some because, uh, you know, I, I've had to, you know, I've talked about this. I've had to use some cash lately for some for some life events. I've been using some, some cash. So I'll probably uh, replenish some of those cash reserves with some of that. And then the the rest will be spun Dude, back. That's gonna into, be a really crazy podcast. When spin we're back into Bitcoin. spin back to uh, Bitcoin. And again, like my portfolio right now is ninety five percent. So yeah. more than ninety five percent. It's like ninety. That's crazy. I only have, I only have I'm 15% uh, like Bitcoin. three or four percent all coins. But yeah. that three or four percent is five figures. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, it well counting well actually it'll be. It might be closer to five percent when we count start counting the ETH because right yeah. now I'm not counting the ETH. When I count the ETH, it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be decent. I mean, a I mean, there's a chance. Time. There's a chance to to. I mean, I I don't want to be overly optimistic because how I feel about shit, shit coins overall. But like, there's a chance to 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 make that six figures in 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 a year. See what it does. In a half, maybe. Yeah, a lot of red. If not, maybe get some dog be, with hat. And it'll be a photo. it'll be a nice score. It'll be a nice score, and. Uh, and uh, we'll do our best to pretend it never happened for <laughs> other purposes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm going to give some uh, last minute thoughts before we wrap this up is just like, this is the time to be dialed in like the bull market. Like it's going to get frothy. It's going to get a foric. You have to be dialed in. And what I like to do is just not even just like focus on like finance is great, but like you have to stay level headed. So like now is the time, like I'm going to be, eating like I'm going to be very strict. I'm going to be very disciplined with my working out. I'm going to be disciplined with my eating habits, my me- my mentality, like my mental like mental health because <coughs> I got to be disciplined. If I want to show success on the charts and I actually want to lock in profits and actually change my life, when I have life-changing money on the table, I'm going to lock that in. I'm not going to keep pushing the goalposts down the road and wishing and wanting I had more. Just be happy. Once you see like a number that could actually make a change, life-changing event, take profits and stay dialed in, you know? So like, this isn't the time where I'm gonna be like drinking, I'm not gonna be smoking, I'm not gonna be doing anything. Any, I'm gonna, all vices, I'm cutting out all vices because I wanna stay focused for this. Because this does, opportunities like this happen once every four years. So I don't wanna blow this. I don't wanna have any regrets coming out of this bull market like I did in 2021, where you just talked about it, round tripping my bags. So. That's just like some thoughts. Just like have a plan and stick to your plan and stick to your rules. Stay disciplined to your daily habits. Stay disciplined to your systematic process and everything will work out. I truly believe it. You know, just make sure you're, you're, you're actually staying disciplined. So do you have any, any last minute thoughts? Like it could be anything just to give some value. Uh, to- for, for people watching us for the first time, uh, follow us on X. Hopefully you're subscribed to this and, and like this video. Uh, if you want to follow me on X, my, my handle is at R A N A L L I underscore Don. Uh, Troy, do you want to give under, him yours? Uh, under or at sign D Phi Pulley. And uh, I want to I, I want to end uh, my segment of this podcast uh, just by reiterating to uh, the the viewing public that 
you know, you've already started to see it. There's a lot of uh, bad actors in our content space. Some of the guys that you uh, you think are good actors, some of the guys that you may idolize in this space or take what you think is alpha from are shitbag scammers. Um, we will start. We've calling already out. started calling them out. Um, I, I'm having a personal vendetta against uh, PyCoin. Um, okay. I've been going hard at, you know, these these guys that Richard Hart. Tweet tweet out PyCoin nonsense, uh, a coin that was created five years ago that still hasn't been released to the public. And, you know, they're making money on the app. They're making money in social media, engagement farming, and they have a, and a loyal segment of the community that really believe they're going to get this free coin by just clicking on their phone and therefore defend them and allow them to continue their scam. Um, and people really believe that this coin is going to be worth a lot of money. If it ever does get released, which I don't think it will, it'll probably be worth pennies and people will just be so disappointed. So they're just prolonging that. So there's one. Um, and then, you know, there's other, there's others in the space too. You, you, you'll have your people that will engagement farm. Uh, there are some people that provided value previously and it seems like, you know, here's the thing. The, if you're, if you're a content creator in crypto and, and Bitcoin, um, you should be providing up like continued growth in value. You shouldn't be saying the same thing in 2024 that you were saying in 2020 or that you were saying in 2018. Like you, you, you got to evolve. Like yeah. just because you're making a lot of money um, through your videos or through your sponsorships, like it doesn't give you a free pass to be lazy and to, to shortchange your, your, your uh, audience. And I think that we as, and again, we're, I'm, I'm a constant consumer of co content and podcasts myself. We should hold these people accountable and call them out when they're doing these types of things. So again, for us, we have people come on here and say that they disagree with things that we say or comment that they don't like some of the things that we do. And, and I, you know, we don't have a lot of subs right now, so I have a chance to interact and I like the interaction. So I want to be held accountable. If I'm doing something or saying something that somebody feels is inaccurate or, or wants to debate, open for that. 100% transparent. Um, I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. But what you're going to get from Troy and Don is continued efforts to improve on a weekly basis. Uh, even if there's 300 people watching, hopefully someday there's 300,000 watching, and we'll we'll continue to strive. Uh, that's the goal of this channel. Again, one more time, I'll say it: if you've made it this far, or you're just watching at this point, or you're just clicked on, and you're 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 in here in the live right now, please uh, share this, like it, subscribe to it. It helps us out. You know, we're we're doing this for free. Um, you know, any any of you guys that know how the monetization works on YouTube, uh, we're putting in. A whole hell of a lot more than we're getting out, but what we're getting out is continuing to learn and continue to grow ourselves and hopefully passing that on to people that are watching. Don't trust verify. Don't trust verify.